What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 15 here of the SFL series is upon us, and we have the two best teams in the league squaring off against each other today. Your Toronto Thunderbirds at 10 and 3, going up against the San Antonio Voyagers at 11 and 2. And huge playoff implications here today. As you see, the Voyagers are number one in the SFL. We are 10 and 3. And then you got the Blues and the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods at 10 and 3 as well. So whichever one of these teams loses could lose a respective number one seed in their respective conferences. So this is a big one today. A lot on the line. No subscriber players on the San Antonio Voyagers. But that's right. You know what time it is. Today we have... More subscribers joining the league. <laughs> That's right. Yes, I love it. We're up to 37 subscribers now. And if you guys would like to join the SFL and get your player on this series here, check the pinned comment below. Got a couple players that requested their player to be in, but they did not leave the specs like the height, weight, name, college, team, position, all that stuff. So got to make sure I know what I'm adding, so make sure you add the proper credentials below. But before we dive into this San Antonio Voyagers roster, let's check on our new subscriber players. All three new players did request to join the Houston Oilers too, so very interesting. Oilers are five and eight, trying to stay alive in this playoff push. So we got three good players joining today, which may help them uh, keep their playoff hopes alive. First, we got QB Lucas Thomas here. Shout out at Thomas Gutierrez in the comments. 5'10", 195 pound, 21 year old rookie out of Texas A&M. And getting a look at Lucas here, he is a scrambler who can definitely throw on the run, 96 in that department and very cool. He's a cool, 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 no. Cool Cucumber under pressure, 96 in that department as well, and pretty fast, 94 speed, so he will be looking to, I'm sure, escape the pocket. Oilers had Daniel Jones as their quarterback, so definitely a solid improvement in that department, and I expect Lucas here to make a immediate impact on the field. Next up, we got new halfback Austin Gutierrez, not sure if... You guys are related or if that's just a coincidence, but either way, Austin here, 5'11", 200 pounds, 21-year-old player out of Texas. We got Texas running back and a Texas A&M quarterback, so there you go. Uh, shout out to at Trios the third, 537 in the comments. T uh, Austin here is an elusive back, pretty course, good core skills all around, 93 speed, 95 agility. He'll definitely be looking to break some ankles and put some players on skates there and a potential new deadly combination with uh, Lucas Thomas and Austin Gutierrez quarterback halfback subscriber connection <laughs> new wide receiver number two in town all three new subscriber players are skill position which I do like to see we got Kyrie Brooks here shout out at Verbsky in the comments five foot nine 160 pound a receiver out of Penn State, deep threat and a playmaking type. With that 95 speed, I, that is a deep threat and a playmaking type. I would definitely consider that to be the case. 94 on the deep route as well. So our new subscribers got a great running back behind him and a great wide receiver to throw to him and Zay Flowers. Always a deadly combination. So shout out to our three new subscribers here on the Houston Oilers. And pivoting from Houston to another Texas team, the San Antonio Voyagers, who we are playing today. Lamar Jackson at quarterback. I can see why they are the best team in the league. How about Joe Flacco? Little Baltimore Ravens action there for you. Joe Mixon and uh, Darianton Evans are the halfbacks. Jason Cabinda, good fullback for whatever that's worth. Wide receiver core, they got Tyler Lockett and Hollywood Brown. Dontavian Wicks, man, me being a Packers fan, watching him last season, he is going to be something special, mark my words. But receivers, nothing too crazy. Michael Mayer, uh, Austin Hooper not playing, so Bob Tunyon. So, I mean, really, the quarterback and the running back are good. Receivers and tight ends, just okay. Offensive line, Bernard Raymond's a good left tackle for sure. Isaiah Wynn, pretty good left guard in his own right. Jason Kelsey's still here. Okay, so not retired because uh, this is the start of the franchise before he retired. So a very good center. Will Fries, eh, okay, at right guard. Austin Jackson, eh, okay, at right tackle. 
And then defensively, ooh, no Will Anderson. That stinks for them. They got Drake Jackson taking his place. Jeffrey Simmons, though, on the opposite side, he's a good rusher for sure. And then Javon Hargrave, good defensive tackle. Malik Collins, not too bad either. So their defensive line, pretty solid, I would say. We got Dennis Gardeck as the left outside linebacker, David Long and Michael Walker, former Chief and Brown there as the middle linebacker, EJ Speed right out. So that's, yeah, it's okay. Linebacking core is decent. Derek Stingley, though, very good corner. Darius Williams, pretty good in his own right. And then Bryce Callahan, Mike Jackson, Trayvon Morig, free safety, and Von Bell, strong safety. So I would just say really Lamar Jackson and Joe Mixon are the big two threats we're going to have to watch today. Jake Elliott kicking the ball and Jack Fox putting the ball away. Should be a good one here today. A lot of offense, I presume. And whoever wins this game will more than likely be the best team in the SFL. So definitely hoping for a big game for the boys. And if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content and you are enjoying this series so far and want to see more, please like the video and subscribe. Remember at 1,000, 1K subscribers, I'm getting close. Thanks to you guys. I really appreciate it. I will do a, a NFL jersey giveaway. So if you love Madden content, consider subscribing. I do not think that you will be disappointed. But without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field and get ready for the game. And will our defense be able to contain Lamar Jackson today? That is the question. We know uh, two-time MVP award winner, he can definitely get the job done. And curious to see what he is up to this season to have his Voyagers seemingly in the driver's seat. We get a look at his stats. Well, there you go. I mean, that's the season right there. 31 touchdowns to only six picks. That's very, dare I say, Jordan Love-esque numbers, our quarterback, right? So we are officially underway here. Jackson going to start out single back, looking to give to Mixon, and he's stopped there by Bobby Wagner. Getting a look at Mixon's stats last week, over 100 on the ground and a touchdown. That's uh, really all you can ask for, right? As a running back, you cross the century mark, you find pay dirt once or twice. That uh, usually is enough to propel you to a win, especially when you got a high-powered MVP caliber quarterback like Lamar Jackson and right off the bat he's finding his tight end Michael Mayer for a big completion of 20. This Thunderbirds defense has been great mostly all season but I would say a little suspect as of late and I think we're going to need our uh, superstar type corners like Marcus Peters, Patrick Peterson, those guys, DJ Reed. They're probably going to need to step up today. One guy stepping up on that play is Zach Cunningham, dropping Joe Mixon for a loss of two. I'll probably be running a lot of QB contain and spies today. I mean, it's Lamar Jackson, so I feel like you kind of have to. And ooh, that was almost a pick from Peterson. Jackson was looking for Tyler Lockett, and Peterson must have heard me because he got uh, at least fingertips on the pigskin. You know, wasn't able to come away with the pick, but a big third and 12 upcoming, so I will consider that a win. Now, here is the time where I'm going to cancel blitz on Wagner. Ah, it's a nice find there for Dontavian Wicks. You got to, on those third and long situations, empty backfield. That's the time where Jackson likes to take off and scramble. That time he did not. Good pocket awareness, finds Lockett for a first down. Go a little press blitz here on first and 10. Ball is into Thunderbirds territory now, so got to be careful Man, I'm telling you, this Zach Cunningham-Bobby Wagner combination is deadly to start. That's going to be a hold, and I think I'll actually go ahead and decline that. I mean, first and 20 is nice, but I do, I don't know. You guys let me know if you think that was the right call. I think it is. I like uh, behind the sticks on second down a little bit better, as this Lamar Jackson team, I'm sure, is, you know, prone to big plays. So I think that fits us a little bit better to do that, and a nice dump off there and catch from Tyler Lockett, so third and six. Maybe I should have accepted the penalty, but guess what? I didn't. I think we'll guess pass here. Third and six again. Got to watch Jackson on the uh, run or scramble. Nope, it's going to be a check down to Michael Mayer, and ooh, he went out of bounds. Needed a little bit more awareness. He might need to get some upgrades and bump up that awareness a little bit, and I'm surprised that uh, Mike McCarthy, who I saw as their coach, is not going for this on fourth and inches. Got to watch the fake, though. Could maybe be a fake. I doubt it, though. I'm sure Jake Elliott will just boot this through. And, I mean, can't argue with points, sure. 
I probably would have went for it there. You know, you got Jackson and Mixon, but they opt to kick field goals, so Voyagers do strike first in this one. Gordon Love, more yards than Lamar Jackson, but not as many touchdowns and just a few more interceptions. But all things considered, I would say these quarterbacks are kind of similar. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're both in the conversation for MVP in this SFL season here. But we are going to start out of the pistol here on first and 10. Going to be a little play action rollout. And it looks like that's going to be picked. No, Zay Jones, heck of an adjustment. That was an overthrow and slightly inaccurate by me, a.k.a. Jordan Love. But Zay Jones made a great adjustment. He was able to pluck that thing from the sky. We got this thing almost to midfield just on one play. So nice way to start for the T-Birds. We'll bring out Tubby here out of single back. He had a good game last week and looking for some lanes. Blockers are not really opening up there. And that one is going to be shut down after only a minimal game. Darren Waller is hurt too, remember. So Logan Thomas, our backup tight end, thrust into starting action. There's Valdez scaling. Ooh, makes a man miss or rather dodges the tackle. And it only took a couple plays and we are already into the red zone. So this uh, San Antonio Voyagers team they may need to not settle for field goals. I think that they're going to have to score points. We know that the Thunderbirds are always a high-scoring team. Tubby going to pick up three there, getting the ball to the 17. And we are in cruise control here, folks. I like what we're doing on this drive. So hopefully we can just keep this going. I may actually put Olave on a streak. Uh, if I can do that, I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. There we go. Olave on the streak. He's not streaking. I don't really know why. Staying on that option route. We'll just go ahead and go to Logan Thomas, who catches it somehow. That was actually a heck of a catch to make it third and two. I'm going to put my faith in Tubby here to follow Kyle Juszczyk and get this first down. He should be able to do it with ease. He does. Tubby's still going. Tubby is the guy in the backfield. Let me tell you what. He has played great ever since joining the SFL. He's our running back out of Georgia Tech subscriber player. And I'm telling you guys, if you want to see, you could see your subscriber player play week in and week out, you know, whether it be on our team or the opposing, t uh, opposing team in the SFL, either way, it's a great tackle there by Javon Hargrave. But all you got to do is comment below and I will add you again. We're up to 37 subscribers, loving the engagement on this series. Of course, I got this series and my main franchise Sentinels that I go back and forth on and I like them both equally. And uh, hope you guys do too. So second and goal. Let's see if we can, might be some running room for Jordan Love here. We're going to take off. Look, I saw no, no uh, D tackle, no nose tackle. They're all spread outside. Jordan Love going to, rarely do we see him take off and scramble. It's not really my playing style. But I mean, come on. That one was just too easy. Justin Tucker going to boot this thing through to make it seven and three. So that was a very fluid drive, very smooth on the offense and uh yeah i mean that's why i was so shocked when mccarthy elected to go for it on fourth and inches it's like don't you read the scouting report i don't know if mike mccarthy does read the scouting report i feel like he just does his own thing and we'll see if uh, the voyagers are able to respond on this drive but i'm guessing they're gonna need more than three single back yeah we'll go nickel blitz here uh would not be surprised if this is a play action or some sort of run like that. Let's see if we can get our subscriber, Jay Monstro, back there in the backfield. He had a couple big plays last week, and that's a heck of a catch by Lockett, albeit for not much, to make it second and four. Jackson coming out with three wide to the right and mixing behind him, and he is going to find Dontavian Wicks there. He was able to keep his feet in. Bounce, take notes, Michael Mayer. Ooh. That's how you pick up a first down. That's how you toe tap on the sideline to not stall the drive for your team, right? And uh, Jackson going back to single back here. Joe Mixon, let's see if he can finally get him going. Mixon going to test the outside. Bobby Wagner all over the place. Him and Zach Cunningham playing great in their respective linebacker roles today. Got heavy pressure over here on the left side. Garrett going to drop back in coverage. Not really his strong suit, but he can do it when he has to. And of course, we overloaded that outside. And what's Mixon do? He runs it right up the gut. The Voyagers now uh, flirting with the red zone as they do get the ball to the 32 of the Thunderbirds. And that is going to wrap up quarter number one. Two long drives by both offenses. Only differences. 
Ours ended in six. Theirs ended in three. But you see, they got us beat on yards. And on this drive, they seem to be cruising pretty nicely. So our defense hopefully can put a stop to that. First and 10 here. Jackson staying in the single back that he has been in for a majority of the game. Mixon starting to figure it out a bit here. I'm going to check it down to Michael Mayer. Wagner's getting about his 43rd tackle already of the game. Actually, no. Probably about his fourth, but still, he's out there doing his thing. They got the fullback, Jason Cabinda, in, so we'll see if Mixon decides to follow him. He will not. It's going to be a check down to Hollywood Brown, so two key catches by Marquise on this drive. And Jackson near perfect, though, at a 90% completion. So if nothing else, he is converting his passes at a pretty high clip. We'll have LaMarcus Joyner and company blitz. We got some pressure there for a moment. Jackson's got good pocket awareness in this game. I'm not sure... If uh, this playbook that they're running, this would be Mike McCarthy's their coach. So this would be Dallas Cowboys playbook. And I mean, Dak Prescott. Yeah, I guess I would say he is more of a pocket passer. So maybe that has something to do with it. I'm just surprised. We typically always when you play Lamar Jackson and Madden, it's like you always see him rolling out. We've yet to see that. But we do see the Voyagers knocking on the door of the end zone. I think Dime Blitz seems like a good idea. Jackson again overloading that right side. With three wide receivers, it's going to be a mix and give, and Mixon is going to go into the end zone untouched. Dime package, that was a tough one. Definitely we're not prepared to stop the run as Mixon takes full advantage of that. And that was a good drive by San Antonio. We see that first drive fizzled out, but I think that we're, we really see kind of what team they're made of on a drive like that. And with that being said, we got to keep up the intensity on offense couple more drives like we had on the last drive and i think we're still in business in this one if it's not working on the ground let's see if we can get tubby involved some way with a screen pass we're gonna get sacked we're gonna get sacked that's drake jackson i i pressed r1 but i knew the second jordan love wound up that football that it was not gonna matter also drake jackson randomly with the uh with the beanie on okay i like it he said f it on picture day but hey to each his own if you make plays like that too often, you're welcome to do whatever the heck you want, I would say. And this puts us in a, a tricky situation here. I mean, we're going to come out verticals, uh, but third and 15, not a whole lot of plays in the good old playbook designed to stop that. I know we need Kareem Hunt to block because we got Jeffrey Simmons over there. And uh, we'll just kind of see if someone can get open. It could be Valda Scantling. Jordan Love drops it in the bucket beautifully. If you thought Lamar Jackson was accurate in this game, you'd be right. But I think Jordan Love's one-upping him. Not as many targets, of course, but that was not an easy pass. He found the soft spot in that zone coverage. Valdez Scantling coming up clutch as he has been for the past few weeks. How about that? Picking up a tough, tough third and 15. Let's have Kareem Hunt spell in here. We'll try to get him involved on the outside. He's been a touchdown machine as of late, uh, but I think the Voyagers found the key to shut that machine down as Derek Stingley, blitzing from his cornerback position, was able to get in there and drop us for a big loss of three. So that is not good. Not what you want to see as an offensive coordinator. How about Mike Oxmall, though, our subscriber receiver? I see him back on the field after being sidelined for a few weeks of injury. And on this one here, we're going to give it to Oxmall. He catches it right on cue. And that was not an easy pass either. I think Mike might have got actually bumped on his route. A lot of credit due to Jordan Love. He is uh, fitting his balls in there. Wait, pause. I'm not going to finish that sentence. He's throwing good footballs is what I was trying to say. Could have really got wrapped up in a sus moment there. But uh, at any rate, Tubby picking up seven. Love to see it. Jordan Love fitting his footballs into very tight places. You, you, you see how bad that could have turned out, right? Second and three. Let's see if this drive can turn out to be points. I wanted Olave in the corner, but not going to turn down a wide open Logan Thomas running on the drag. And he's able to get a first down. And we got this ball, ladies and gents, all the way down to the 13. What did I say pregame? This could be two high-powered offenses going back and forth. Seems to be what's going to happen today. I'll tell you what, though, I'm not liking the running ability of our halfbacks in this one. Voyager's kind of got us shut down in that department. I like the levels on the left side, but I kind of also like maybe Logan Thomas. Nope, we almost got sacked again. Man, 
Drake Jackson and his beanie wearing self is a problem back there. That's Jordan Love's first incompletion, though. So he is still having a great, great day. Now on third and eight, I'm going to go Bills Verts. But I wouldn't be surprised if I don't see maybe like Valdez Scantling or Thomas open right away. This could be Kareem Hunt on the check down. But I do see Thomas and Jordan Love. Oh, but he couldn't hang on to it. If that's Darren Waller, that's a touchdown. Mark my words. If that's Waller, he hangs on. Yes, it was a tough catch, but the ball placement was phenomenal. And Logan Thomas tried to absorb the hit there and hang on to the hold on to the ball. And he just was not able to, unfortunately. But we tied things up with Justin Tucker. 10-10. Hard to believe this is already winding down close to halftime. I feel like it's been really short. But it has certainly been action-packed. Yeah, both running backs, Joe Mixon and Tubby McDouble, and Kareem Hunt, I guess, in fairness, none of them can get it going. It's just Lamar Jackson and Jordan Love. So don't be surprised if those two make the thumbnail. Of course, you guys will already know that before I even made that statement. Oh, Joe Mixon, don't speak too soon. He's a very good running back. He can get it going at any time. Picks up a nice gain there to take this ball to the 40. I'm going QB contained though here because I'm still not convinced that we're not going to start seeing some runs by Lamar Jackson. He hasn't as of yet. Mixon testing the outside. Nice spin move. But who else? Bobby Wagner or maybe that was that was actually Zach Cunningham. I believe it was. Those two have been all over the field. And that is going to take us to the two minute warning. So this play, upcoming play here, third and two. I think this will determine probably the last team to score points. If the Voyagers don't get this, I can see us scoring. If they do get it, I can see them milking the clock down and scoring, you know, close to last minute. So we'll just have to see. Man, heck of a catch by Tyler Lockett. And Jackson only with one incomplete pass. Love only with about three. All right, Jackson going to go to shotgun with Mixon to his right. We're going to bring a little pressure with LaMarcus Joyner. Oh, screen, what a great call. We had a lot of pressure in the face of Lamar, of, uh, Lamar Jackson, and screen pass was the perfect call you could call in that scenario. So kudos to Mike McCarthy. I guess maybe he was watching scouting or doing some scouting, looking at the scouting report. I don't know. And we may think about... Uh, oh, God, somebody think about, please, tackling uh, Hollywood Brown there. I was going to say we may think about using our timeouts, but that would be dumb and not going to matter anyways because the Voyagers are going to use theirs. We are going to drop into zone coverage here. Jackson empty, so got to watch the scramble. It's just Michael Mayer, and the Voyagers don't even need to use their timeouts. Yeah, they're not. So this is what I was talking about. If a nice, long, methodical drive, they will probably – be the last to score, but why use a timeout there? You got 50 seconds. You still got two in your pocket. No real hurry. Clock is not really your enemy in that situation. I think that actually does us more good by Mike McCarthy calling a timeout like that. So not really sure what the logic is there, but I'm not going to argue with it. A wide open there is Tyler Lockett. And we may have a chance to get some quick points here, but I'll tell you what. These Voyagers are tough. That opening drive was a little sketchy for them, but ever since then, it's been pretty much a walk in the park. Walk in the park, or a park, however you want to say it. 47 seconds. Do we have a chance to go down and at least put up three? That is the question. I think I'm going to test screen pass with Tubby. If we get something positive, I may be aggressive, but if not, you know, I'm content to go into the locker room. But Tubby, oh my God, he may score one man to beat Valda Scantling. Could not catch up to Von Bell. We are most certainly going to use a timeout there. I thought Tubby may be gone on that one. A huge chunk play on the screen gets us all the way to uh, basically midfield. And Zay Jones is also getting pressed too. So uh, I'm going to go to him. Shot to Zay. He's got a chance. Oh, great defense there by Stingley. It's okay. That's when you want to take a shot is on first down. Just need to get in range for Justin Tucker, which uh, at times seems infinite. I may try to roll out to the right on this one. We're going to look for... Uh, what was that from Jordan Love? That was a terrible pass. That was a terrible pass. going to be picked by Von Bell. I realize we had pressure in our face, but that was nowhere near the intended target, which was subscriber Mike Oxmall. And that could be big because did we leave... 
the Voyager's too much time. Now, pressure is there, which I will say, the pressure, I maybe should have dropped back a little bit more. Thought about rolling out, but you got, uh, you know, Jeffrey Simmons over there, so that's never a great idea. But, I mean, uh, Mike Oxmall is open. He is open. Jordan Love just drifts it, which we have not grown accustomed to seeing too much. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a pass. I mean, that should be, right? They still got all the time in the world. Put your hands up, LaMarcus Joyner. And we're going to give him a field goal. Giving him three points. Just like that. That is uncalled for. And we need to just go ahead and get in the locker room and evaluate. Only down by 10. Not the worst thing in the world. And we get the ball back. But we're going to have to engineer a really good drive coming out of the locker room because this Voyagers team looks like the real deal. And I'll tell you, we haven't lost a lot, this Thunderbirds team. Uh, but if we don't turn things around, we may be looking at that being the result today. I mean, the yardage, not a huge disparity there. Uh, both teams doing good in the passing, passing game, not doing so hot in the running department. But it is the scoreboard and that one crucial mistake. We get a look at the... Austin Lumberjacks here, uh, Dreadnoughts, beat them by one point. Okay, so subscriber Alexander Klobeck on the Dreadnoughts and Michael Yakin and James Briner on the Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks, we got this division locked up, by the way. There is not a snowball's chance in H-E double hockey sticks that we lose this division. Lumberjacks were the closest to catching us, and I believe they are now sub-500. And uh, Sentinels and Shamrocks, we got a couple subscriber Quarterbacks going at it, Jesse Buzo Jr. and Rocky DiBernardo. Shamrock's got the edge for now, and they have been on a tear as of late. They started out 0-5 or 0-6. They're now over 500. How about that? See if we can turn things around, boys. I have all the confidence in the world, but uh, when you got Lamar Jackson on the opposing team, oh, someone said a good pancake block. Can I finally get a good kick return? I don't think I have ever had a good kick return since Madden 24 came out. Like... I think maybe my uh, longest kick return is like 40 yards or something like that. I don't know. It's probably me. I probably suck. Yes. But I'll tell you what. Uh, we're going to go RPO here. Yes. And we're going to ID up Jeff Simmons as the mic in case we decide to run it, which we don't. Vow to Scantling. Uh, juke move. Leaving a little bit to be desired there. And uh, only picking up two. Little mesh spot here on a Thursday afternoon. Never heard anybody. We're going to go underneath. Devalda Scantling, who has really been our main weapon. As I'm sitting here thinking about it, I don't think Zay Jones nor... Zay Jones might have one catch. He does. He has that big catch at the beginning. No catches, though, from Chris Olave. No targets, either. Uh, may have to think about changing that here. As I say that, um, I'm going to put Olave on a curl, as a matter of fact. With this play action, we just may be able to hit him. I don't like it. So we're going to go to Thomas and God Almighty... That one could have been, should have been picked there for Von Bell's, Von Bell's second. Big third and five here, and, you know, coach is saying screen to Kareem Hunt, and I kind of like that. It's, uh, oh, Olave, uh, kind of want to streak him, but it's a little too risky. We're just going to go with the safe play here. Kareem, get some block. Why is my freaking uh, Joe Tooney, my guard, push the blocker right into me? I mean, I realize, like, you know, you're just trying to get hands on the defender. I guess I should have cut with Kareem Hunt. That could have been an option. Right there is where I should have cut. Uh, but Joe Tooney just did not do a good job sealing the block there. And that was a pretty easy tackle there by uh, Trayvon Moreg, the free safety. And we're going to have to punt with A.J. Cole. No AJ bueno, Cole folks. And unless we can find an answer... For this Voyagers team, which so far today we have none. This could start to get ugly and start to get ugly quick. I mean, at this point, I almost want Lamar Jackson to try running it because uh, he's carving us up like a Thanksgiving feast, like the old roast beast in the Grinch. He's carving us up. Pocket presence is on full display today. Maybe if he would roll out a little bit or something like that, we may be able to generate some pressure and get some sacks because right now we're not doing either. Nice uh, tackle from behind there by Zach Cunningham. This is a crucial, crucial, crucial third down. And I'm going press blitz here. I'm going press blitz and uh, hoping that maybe Joe Mixon stays in the backfield, which he is. And this could be it. Heck of a catch there by Hollywood Brown. I mean, what do you even say to that? What do you even say to that? 
Marcus Peters did get beat slightly, but it's Lamar Jackson is Lamar Jackson. He is doing Lamar Jackson type of things. I mean, you could not put that ball in a better spot. Somebody, anybody, will the real Thunderbirds defense please stand up? I'm not believing what I'm seeing today. With the exception of Bobby Wagner and Zach Cunningham getting a lot of tackles, that's about the only thing that I've seen positive. And sometimes a lot of tackles is actually not a good stat, believe it or not, because that means that uh, you're not getting them off the field and you're allowing them to pick up good play after good play. I'm, that's, I'll take full responsibility for that because I was usured up on Jordan Poyer. And he's, his man assignment was Joe Mixon, and I ran at him full speed and just completely whipped the tackle. So that one is 100% on me. I will take all the onus of that, no problem problem admitting it. And now they got full momentum. They got improved blocking and improved catching. What uh, what more could you ask for, right? That's They've been doing that anyways, even before they had momentum. Uh, need to try to get... Olave involved here and this may just be the one there we go okay nice to see Chris get a catch the exception of that interception Jordan Love not playing poorly it's just some things haven't really gone our way we haven't really been able to be in a position where we are you know scoring or even close to scoring and giving the ball to the Voyagers and having them kick that field goal right before halftime was actually huge I did switch the focus to inside run for our game plan to try to get Tubby involved. But so far, he's had a pretty tough day at it. I think we go screen pass again. Right now, I am just trying to pick up positive play after positive play. I realize that's what you do in any game all game long. But what I'm saying is I don't need like the big home run shot, even though we are down 17. Just need to find a way to get the ball into the end zone. And second and one, this is when I say we take a shot off a of play action, maybe hit Zay Jones. Yes, perfect, there we go. Oh man, I thought for a moment that the defender was gonna jump up and swat that, but we put just enough under that thing, and that is what you like to see. So this game is far from over. We are right back into this thing. However, our defense is gonna have to start making some stops. See, the problem is though, nothing's working. Blitz ain't working, zone ain't working, man ain't working. Uh, we'll try mid blitz here. Haven't called that play yet today. Maybe. Oh, why did I dive with Garrett? I did not mean to do that, man. I just made my man Star Fox barrel roll it out there for no reason. Do a barrel roll. I need probably got to have Garrett maybe drop out here. Extra coverage. Nope. And Joe Mixon has figured it out, ladies and gentlemen. Now over 100 yards. He started out so bad. We were all over him. He has completely turned it around not even since halftime he was starting to turn it around late in the second i feel like and he is literally having his way with us out there um so gotta make stopping him a big focus and there's miles okay good positive play by garrett and a loss of one on the play to mixon maybe a little risky but i'm gonna have a safety blitz over here on the right side not sure uh, well, that's what i said it's risky <laughs> It's risky because Lamar Jackson is reading our defense. Only one incomplete pass so far in this game. That is absolutely redundant. We're just making it way too easy for them. Way too easy. Jackson in pistol, which is obviously a huge staple of his game in real life. And that's going to be a Michael Mayer touchdown. Yeah. Um, worst I've seen our defense look all season. No question. Takes the cake. Even if we finish this game with three interceptions, which is not going to happen, by the way. Worst, I've seen our defense perform all season. And this game is just every time we take one step forward, we take two steps back. And we're fighting and clawing to stay into it, but it's about to be the fourth quarter. So Father Time is going to be our public enemy number one. And unless we really, really, now we're probably going to have to go for big chunk plays. But even if that happens, it's our defense. Our defense can't stop anything. And that is why we are down in this game. Now, Olave is getting pressed. If I see that safety take somebody, this could be oh, money shot. And I pressed the wrong button. Boy, howdy, freaking Batman. This is not my game today. I think I hear some boos in Thunderbirds field too. Look, guys, fans, don't boo us. You know, teams lose. We're still going to be... Probably number one seed in the AFC or, you know, close to it. So don't be booing. Don't be no Fairweather fan here. See, all took us a little TE attack. 
Simmer down, hold your horses, guys. We're not technically out of this thing yet. One more play before the end of the third, and Olave getting pressed again. But the problem is he's not winning on it, and that's a... Wouldn't have mattered anyways. I was going deep shot to Zay Jones. Does not matter. Maybe it's a good thing that we had to throw out of the sack because that one could have been picked. Right, this is our last play now before the end of the third. So let's make it a good one, boys. Please. It's going to be picked. Yep. Yep. Going to be picked. Trayvon Moray. Going to be a pick six, as a matter of fact. And uh, looks like the Voyagers are still going to be the best team in the SFL. <laughs> I'll tell you what, go. though. Here I'm go. not going out without a fight. These Voyagers are going to have to earn this. And looks like they are because they continue to stop Tubby. Shot to play action here. Maybe Logan Thomas getting open on the seam route, which he is and hangs on. So I'll tell you what, if nothing else, we know we have a reliable tight end option if Darren Waller gets hurt. Logan Thomas, 5 for 78. I believe it said, and oh wow, my man's doing backflips. I didn't know you were that athletic, Logan. I uh, I like the moves, brother. This could be, if we have time, this could be Olave. I'm going to also streak Zay Jones, too. Olave on the corner route, but again, we need that time. There we go. Okay. Maybe a case of too little too late, but now Jordan Love finally starting to put it together and find his top-tier receivers. Drake Jackson. Round of applause for this man. He's had a really good game today. Feel like we've called his name on uh, play after play after play. And he's playing good. So, again, running out of time here. I mean, going to go ahead and mentally chalk this up as an L, but you never know, right? Stranger things have happened. So, technically, we're still not out of it. Let's see if uh, Valdez Scantling can haul this in tough. That would have been a tough catch. Shout out to Jordan Love for putting it in a good position. MVS couldn't hang on. It's pretty much it here. It's key third and 11. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Good ball placement from Love again. So doing just enough to keep the fans from trying to get good, uh, trying to beat traffic, I should say, because, you know, is it over? Probably. Probably. But you never know. Like I said, this is the NFL. The SFL, actually. Oops. Caught me there. Mike Oxmall might be open. We're going to give him. It's That's picked too. Oh, should have been picked. That was just bad ball placement by me. Believe it or not, I would say this game was won, or in our case, lost in the trenches. Because you see it right there on your screen. 13 rushes for 42 yards for Tubby. I mean, we're talking about a guy who typically goes over 100. No problem. And I just feel like we never, even with me making defend the inside run our focus we just never have been able to establish um any sort of consistency with tubby so i feel like that's kind of why we're losing this game i probably should have hit olave but again worried about that pick yes we are gonna go for it um olave i'm gonna put on a curl and i'm gonna leave everybody else on streaks that's great defense but even better catch by olave and yeah, we might score here but, I mean, five minutes, like, does it really matter? Does it really matter? It'll make the scoreboard look a little bit more respectable and the stats look a little bit more respectable. But, I mean, let's be honest. This thing is pretty much over. And with a pick, oh, Zay Jones almost caught it off the bobble. That would have been something. Our last chance here going to be Y-Stick. You know I'm looking for Chris Olave all day long. Olave hangs on. Okay. So there we go. I guess we'll try for the onside kick. I mean, I wants to go for two as well, which uh, we will also do that. Doesn't hurt, right? We're gonna need we're gonna need we're gonna need a lot of things to go our way uh, in this one. I don't think that uh, I think that was actually picked. Actually, not gonna matter on a two point conversion. But yeah, I mean, onside kick. We're gonna go speed onside. Yeah, I never get these. We're gonna do high kick. And just hope for uh, hope for a good bounce. You know, it is possible to recover an onside kick, albeit very doubtful. That thing might not. Yeah, didn't travel five yards. So we recovered it. But it's all for naught. And uh, that is more than likely going to do it here for a sad, depressing game here in Thunderbirds Field. Man, these Voyagers were not messing around. Whoever we're in the AFC, they're in the NFC. So whoever has to face them in the NFC playoffs. I feel bad for you. They put up 20, they beat us by 21, 
adding a field goal there at the end in garbage time. And yeah, I am uh, kind of in shock over here because that's not how this Thunderbird team typically looks. Lamar Jackson, only one incompletion. How do you not give him a perfect quarterback rating? Like 136.1, okay, maybe the yardage, but like 96% completion, two touchdowns. I don't know. Jordan Love had a lot of yards, also two touchdowns, but also two very crucial picks. Here's where the game was lost. Like I said, in the trenches, Tubby, 53 yards, 3.3 yards per carry. Joe Mixon, after a horrendous start, finishes the day with 145 and 7.2 on the ground, plus two touchdowns. That's the game right there. Michael Mayer played great. Hollywood Brown played great. Logan Thomas for us played good, which is nice. And uh, Mike Oxmall, one big catch for 13 yards. Need to see some defense out of our subscriber player, Jay Mongstro. He has not really been able to generate too much pressure yet. They had uh, one sack. We had none. They had two picks. We had none. So that is the game. It's a tough one, but look. We're still uh, only four losses on the season. Still very much alive for the number one seed. But with that game being under wraps, let's check out our subscriber player stats here in week 15. Oakland Wizards take a big loss to the San Diego Aviators, who we play next week. And they got a new subscriber running back on the Wizards team. So let's take a look and see how he did. I am Al Musa. He had a great initial first game last week and looks to be continuing his dominance 17 attempts for 129 yards and a touchdown. Did have one fumble, so, uh, you know, that's uh, not good. But, I mean, he looks to be a pretty darn good halfback. And then checking on the stats of subscriber Michael Bariner here, the linebacker. Only one tackle, and he's been playing really good as of late. So this was definitely a down game for him. Virginia Beach Blues. They have lost a couple in a row now. Still one of the best teams in the SFL, but... Uh, and my man Yeezy Fuentes, shout out to you. I know you're going to see this and pull your hair out. But Josh Allen, 140 passing yards. What is going on with my man Josh? Three targets for Yeezy and 25 yards on the ground. But how does Josh Allen, he should be having 300, 400 yard games. Justin Fields, I'm not surprised. He's got 150 yards passing. But Josh Allen... I'm going to need you to get it together, brother. Albuquerque Armadillos, two-score two win over the Snowhawks. And we've got a couple subscribers here on the Dillos. So first checking on the receiving stats here. We got Jaden Taylor, pretty solid game. Three catches for 57 yards. And tight end Bjorn Jeffrey, three for 28. So uh, pretty good there. And then looking at uh, the defense from Arturo Esquivel, Back healthy from injury. He had five tackles. No big game-breaking stats, but sometimes just being there and getting stops, sometimes that's all you need. Can Condors putting together uh, quite the win streak? I believe that's three in a row for them. Jared Goff, not uh, too many yards, but lots of uh, passing touchdowns at least. And checking on the stats of subscriber Braden Keys. Only one catch for eight yards. He's played really, really well this season. Down game for him there. But his team got the win. So it's like, you know, the win is the most important stat in the world. Mike Collins here, four tackles, no huge game-breaking stats. And Eli Sokowitz also three tackles and no huge game-breaking stats. Tigers and Black Knights, subscribers all across the board here. San Juan Tigers pick up a nice three-score win over the Paris Black Knights. And QB Jaden Hayes. Not the best game in the world. 180 yards and two picks. He has had a rough stretch as of late. Not even going to sit here and lie to you. But, uh, you know, it's all right. He'll bounce back. Got uh, his brother, Caleb Hayes, here. Three catches for 27 yards. And then taking a look at the subscriber stats of the... Uh, uh, what team is this again? The Tigers. Nick Stoyer and St. James. I have no answer. Unless they're injured, right? I'll go check. I have no, I've reordered the depth chart so many times and put them at the top of the lineup so many times and they still have no targets. So maybe they're injured. I don't know. I mean, in fairness, other than Devonta Smith, nobody really had a lot of yards in that one, but I just can't figure it out. And then we'll get a look at the Love Brothers here. We got uh, Dior Love, tackle for loss and a pick and four tackles. So really good uh, game there. And then King Love also a pick as well. So both the Love Brothers, not real brothers, but same last name, both with interceptions that I'm sure propelled 
this Tigers team to a victory. Lumberjacks and Dreadnoughts, it was a tight one, but the Melbourne Dreadnoughts do eke out a one point victory and Michael Yakin played pretty good though 241 two touchdowns and an interception and then we have receiving stats for both teams Alexander Kloblek the uh, 5 foot 11 261 pound receiver three catches for 27 yards Jalen Waddle he uh he he poached all the catches in that one and then James Briner the tight end three for 31 but a big touchdown so good to see there and that game looked like it was a freaking thriller. OKC Antlers beat the Mounties by two scores. And we have a lone subscriber on the Antlers. That would be cornerback C. Ben. So we'll take a look at his stats and see what he was able to do. If anything, he had no picks, but a tackle for loss. That's good. And also four tackles helping propel his team to a nice victory. Oilers beat the River Hogs. We got three new subscribers on that team. So it looks like they... We're able to get the job done. Lucas Thomas, I mean, 196 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. So a solid, I will say, workmanlike game. But that must mean our running back, Austin Gutierrez. I mean, eight for 44. Looks like he split reps with Alexander Madison. So, you know, not much I can do there. But still, I mean, a decent contributor. And then Kyrie Brooks, though, six for 91. No touchdowns, but where did the where did the touchdowns come from? Madison had one. Must have been some defensive scores or something, but at any rate, the comeback starts now for the Houston Oilers. How about these Dublin friggin' Shamrocks? Just continue to pile on the wins. Uh, looks like it was a good old-fashioned duel among subscriber quarterbacks. Jesse Buzo Jr. getting the win, though. 258 through the air and three picks. Rocky had 306 and four, but three probably costly costly interceptions is probably uh you know what did it in in that one unfortunately and if we get a look at the receiving stats here we have new subscriber uku tree rat here with two receptions for 37 yards so a nice contributing game for him and ty royal smoochy wallace possibly my favorite name here on the sfl it's between that or tubby mcdouble but he had a big interception and five tackles so maybe that was the interception that sealed the game. Who knows? But at any rate, these Dublin Shamrocks and these three subscribers on their team keep on finding ways to win. Chicago Elks, who we just played, they pick up the win over the Portland Steamers. And of course, they have subscriber or running back on their team, Darian Wolcott, who didn't really have a great game. Uh, he didn't have a great game when we played him either. It was more so Trevor Lawrence and that passing attack. But Darian Wolcott, 15 for 36, 2.4 yards on the ground. But again, as I always say in these little stat recaps, most important stat is the win. Orlando Orbit's tough three-point loss to the Columbus Caps. And uh, we'll take a look at subscriber running back Johnny Waters. Yeah, he's uh, just getting all the refs poached away from him by Jonathan Taylor, unfortunately. I may have to go in there and drop his overall. Only two carries for five yards. So maybe if Johnny was playing Orlando Orbitz, maybe you would have got the win. I don't know. And we also got a subscriber corner here, Flash Parker, who had three tackles. No big game-breaking plays. Probably, unfortunately, could have used them with uh, only a three-point loss. And rounding things out here, these Salt Lake City Bisons and the Brooklyn Nighthawks. If you did not see your team, that means you must have had a bye week. But uh, we just played, literally just played the Bisons. It was a good game. And Mason Buchanan and Derek Daragosa, subscriber duel here. Buchanan, 211, two touchdowns. Daragosa, also a pretty good game, 273 and two touchdowns. But again, a costly interception there. Could have made the difference, but wow. Have a game, Nico Petey. 17 for 171. Average 10.1 yards on the ground. That's ridiculous. And also two big touchdowns. I'm sure that that is what helped propel his Bisons to a big, big win over the Nighthawks. So there you have it, folks. Week 15's in the books. And, I mean, we're still good. We're still number one seed in the AFC. Voyager's number one seed in the NFC. So we're still fine. All we got to do is just make sure we win these probably these last three games, or at least two out of three. If we win two out of three, I'm confident that we'll lock up the number one seed. Uh, definitely got the division on lock. No question there at all. But... That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.